Yes. Uh, was the meeting noticed and properly posted? All right, look for approval to or motion to approve the agenda. I will move to approve the agenda. I'll second that. We have a first and second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All against? Actually, I'd like to amend the agenda. We need to, don't we need to take care of the minutes from prior meeting? Are they not in our packet? They're missing. Okay, so I guess we're gonna skip that part. Good. Uh, I withdraw my request to change it. So, aye. We're all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Any uh, citizen comments? Nobody on the Zoom? Do I ask for that twice? No? All right. I don't see any unfinished business other than finding meet meeting minutes. Um, number seven, new business. Uh, A, review and discuss the request for CSM for the Dollar Tree. Want to give us an overview? Sorry about that. Kind of threw the staff memo together. Obviously, it's my first one. I've been here for four days. <clears throat> so um, I apologize if it's not normally kind of what we are providing. But so basically, CBC DT LLC has an agreement with the city to purchase um, the two parcels that are identified uh, within the staff memo um, in order to construct, which would be the, the Dollar Tree. Um, this is a, a CSM, so there's no public hearing that's required. We just have to make sure that it's compliant with Wisconsin Admin Code, AE7, Wisconsin Statute 236, and then our own um, ordinances. Uh, it has been reviewed from a zoning standpoint and does meet all of those zoning requirements. As you can see, there is a city engineer letter that's attached that goes more to the technical standards of the statute of items that need to be kind of amended, changed, or clarified um, in the proposal. Um, so ultimately, if the Planning Commission were to recommend approval of the CSM, we would request that the applicant must address all the comments, the clarification items, and the concerns that are noted in that letter dated April or September 8th, 2023, and then a revised copy of that CSM must be submitted for further review. And then the second would be contingent upon the actual sale of the property, and if for some reason that sale does not occur, the CSM will be considered um, rejected. I don't know if there's any specific questions. So I, I have a question. So what happens if the CSM gets rejected tonight? How does, what, how, what, what would happen? So your recommendation for rejection will still go to the city council is my understanding per the ordinance. And, that, and it would go to city council and then they would have to uh, approve it depending on whatever happens at the meeting then? Correct. Okay. Do the parcels of themselves, as they exist today, meet zoning regs with regard to size, et cetera? As being separate? Right. Yeah, I don't know. Don't I know. We did okay. not check That's that. Fine. Right, because the stated reason is really get rid of that that intercepting property line, because otherwise they'd, any yeah, project they proposal yeah. they'd have would, would yeah. have Can't to worry about the, the setbacks and <laughs> yeah. things like that yeah. interior. And they want to they want to use the parcel as a whole as a for whole. some for some site plan. Have they presented any kind of preliminary site plan? We do have a preliminary site plan that staff is currently under review. Okay. Site plans are approved in house by the by the right. staff. Right. Is presentation of that preliminary site plan germane to the? conversation we might have here I don't believe so not for the CSM so 
survey map, is that requested by the city? sale or sell no I mean if it were any commercial development in this particular district if they had two lots that obviously did not accommodate all of the development standards you can't put a building over the top of the, the lot line so the city would obviously request that the lots be combined to meet the zoning requirements all of the zoning requirements so not just the setbacks but all of the development standards as well okay. on one lot And the letter that was stated er, September 8th, mm -hmm. was that after we had received the certified survey map? That it did not meet the requirements or? I don't know that it necessarily doesn't meet the requirements. There are things that have to be addressed to meet the statutory requirements, oh. which isn't, I mean, isn't uncommon okay. for things to need to be kind of tweaked to meet the requirements. <laughs> it looks like they're getting the whole west side of the property, right? Yeah, these I'd, I'd concur that these are the kind of comments that we, we commonly see. I'm looking at number 12, though, about um, proposed easements being recorded as a separate instrument. I guess preference would be, as if possible, that those appear on the, the CSM, although I understand that the stormwater easement is probably can, can only be sized once they come forward with a site plan. Right, we'd get into a chicken or the egg problem if we said put the easement on there now when they don't really maybe know what their site plan exactly is nor how big the stormwater management uh, features need to be. Correct, and there is a there was stormwater that was submitted with the site plan okay. portion. I just don't believe that the engineers obviously had time to run the calculations to see okay. what size that would actually be and if it's accurate. All right. So I guess that's preference, but I understand that it might need to be done differently here. The property to the west, is that the Burger King property? Is that what it butts up to there? Uriah, <laughs> if he saw any other things that we should be concerned with. No, I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's combining two existing lots into one for a stated purpose. So, I think just one thing to note is, and I've, I've seen concern about this, but this is basically the two parking lots that are on the other side of the street of uh, Meister Drive from the country, the former countryside building, right? That's, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm, I see that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. exactly the, Okay. So, so these are those the two, right. like, where they used to keep all the cars at the yeah, country. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's to the right of where the old board building so, was. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. The <laughs> Thank you. Well, Meister Drive is actually a street that drives right in the right. middle of their parking lot. Right, so yeah. if you're going this way, Meister That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so if you're going down. Countryside was here. Yep. Yeah parking lot okay and that's where all those trucks were usually parked cool thank you <clears throat> from a driveway perspective yeah I've always I've always appreciated the lack of the inconvenience of curbs to either side of me when I'm driving there but <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna ask I was gonna ask about that I thought about okay do we do we worry about trying to delineate that better at this point in time but I 
a, a site plan is going to address some things. of that. I, I'm presuming that there's going to be some street improvement that goes along with any any proposal there. So I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about making an issue of it at this point in time because it really crosses the line between survey work and site improvement work. But I don't know, maybe that's just something on the city. If, if they can get delineated better at this point in time, that'd be great. But I don't know that that's, again, germane <clears throat> to the conversation of a CSM. But. So let me know if this question's out of line then. Um, where is where would their driveway be to that? Would it be off of Meister, or will it be out of off of James, or is it that whole corner? That's a site plan review question. Usually, I would guess that the DOT has restricted access off of 1660. Oh, you know what? That's a, that's often if there's something recorded against access restriction. Oh, they show an access opening there. Yeah, I'm assuming Meister Drive is yeah, is the access opening, right. and then they'll well. Yeah. We can't do anything more. That's the map shows an access no opening problem. off of 1660, but if there is a restriction that the DOT has bought out there, that's the type of thing that usually appears on a certified survey map. So maybe we add that to the list of comments that Jason Letha has has made. Ask about. Whether there's a right, where are you seeing that on the survey map? Can can you point that out? He's calling this. Right here. God. It's not clear to me on here whether this. that's a sixty foot opening that exists ah. today or okay. a sixty foot opening that is proposed for the future or hmm. What? So okay. a little clarity on that, I think, would be good. Yeah, that's definitely important. Thank you. What's that? He said he could answer. I can answer those questions. I can address it. I believe so. Who are you? <laughs> when he gets to the mic, he can say. Group. Um, I'm with Renaissance Infrastructure Consulting. We're the engineering firm. Um, so the 60-foot wide opening is an existing access. It breaks the current access uh, restriction to the highway. Um, all the all the site plans that we've submitted to the city and we've been working with on with the city on take access off Meister. We're not planning on using that. site plans will just go through the staff and then through council for final approval I don't think staff review goes to council at all or the site plan review is just a, a staff review and approval with the various we have a development review committee so we're all looking at it together because it's a permitted use within the within Correct, that zoning yes. if it were a conditional use it'd come here and I would assume Jason's part of that yes all right, any other discussion? All right, I would uh, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to recommend approval to the Common Council, um, including the two conditions proposed by staff, that the applicant address the comments from the city engineer and that um, the approval is contingent upon the sale of the property to the party ap applying. I will second that. Any discussion? All right. We have a first and we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? we take a roll call for this? Yeah. I don't think that we're not, we're not doing any money, right? Right. All right. Motion carries.
7B, discuss process to amend the zoning code for murals. I believe there's stuff in the packet. Um, looks to be that there's one zoning code for signs. And it looks like they are looking to have a separate one for murals. Is that correct? I think trying to incorporate something for murals into the signed ordinance. Um, I think the, the recommendations of the report that's provided kind of identify the sections where a mural doesn't really fit in the sign code. Murals t tend to not to. I mean, it's a wall sign that normally exceeds the size requirements that are allowed. So there's some tweaking, I guess, that needs to be completed for the mural to go up on the as being proposed on the building next door. So just looking, I guess, for direction from the plan commission to work um, with the city attorney to try to figure out how to include language that allow for the mural moving forward. So we actually amending the code or creating a new code or no, what is it'll the it'll probably be an amendment to the existing sign section to come up with provisions that will allow the mural to take place. And we have some time because my understanding is we're still in the fundraising um, aspect of the project, but definitely something we need to start to work on because obviously it requires a public hearing before you guys when we amend the, the ordinance. So, psst. We've got... Uh, <laughs> To speak to this. Um, hi, thank you for adding this to the agenda. This was a little bit of a surprise to me so quickly, so I appreciate your guys' diligence on this. Um, part of the issue is, is if you look at the current sign ordinance, it does not cater to any type of mural. So currently the mural that was approved to be fundraised through council, we have to downsize by 100 square feet. So not only will we be looking at you guys to actually make a separate ordinance or an amended to reflect the growing trend of murals, but also looking at a variance to allow us to proceed with the original mural, adding that, keeping that additional 100 square feet. So you're looking for a second ordinance um, but then also looking at a hopeful, vari variance. To hopeful the for a variance. I okay. wouldn't say I'm looking for. I would be hopeful that this commission would see the value in adding that variance to to not downsize it by a hundred square feet. I think it's a it's a little bit of a nuance when it comes to murals. You look at the size that we're we're looking at, which was originally 26 by 25. Um, we are going to have to scale that back a little bit, and I've been in communities where it takes up a heck of a lot more space than that 500 square feet that is currently reflected in the ordinance. My light's been on. Can I talk? You can. <laughs> I hope you're not making fun of me for reason. <laughs> um, so we have an ordinance ad hoc committee, so I'm wondering why this would come to us to amend the ordinance i'm wondering if this should be coming to the ordinance ad hoc committee because it's the zoning ordinance so you guys are tasked with amending the zoning okay ordinance. so the ordinance ad hoc committee does not do those it's this this, this one specifically comes to, to plan commission okay. is my understanding okay yeah that was that was part of my question too i was wondering how the historic landmark Commission fit into here the way I understand reading this it's because the historic landmark commission is Commissioning or wants the mural it doesn't fit into the sign ordinance Which is a zoning ordinance and the zoning ordinance is our domain Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you Can you can I can you repeat yourself quick because did you say they did not want that I the the Historic yeah, the Preservation historic, Committee yeah wants would like the mural with blessings i'll speak <laughs> i'm ruth hermanson from chlpc and i'm here to um answer any questions or things like that so um 
they have, and we don't have a lot of authority right now um, because we're in the middle of the ordinance review, but we give it, um, we'd like to see the murals, but we have um, no real jurisdiction. If you read the existing ordinance, it pertains to businesses and promoting businesses, you know, like some of the older murals in town or whatever you want to call them, advertisements on buildings, they're larger. Um, they deal, your existing ordinance deals with specifically business related. This needs to be more of a general statement uh, relating to the history of Columbus or whatever the mural is going to be about, whether it's, um, you know, like, you know, possible red buds, something like that, honoring. And that's the Beautification Commission. That's not HLPC. Um, but there's two commissions, correct. And um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. I think what you stated was well said. Um, the existing ordinance does not provide for murals pretty much at all. So that has to be addressed, um, whether it's in an amendment or whatever you want to call it. Um, and um, it's... It's, if you look around other communities, Watertown, Beaverdam, they've done an excellent job, and we're hoping to bring some of that to Columbus. And the big thing is to be aware and honor our history and the beauty of Columbus. Any questions? Thank you. Not, not for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> so, again, trying to get my feet under me just sort of from a basis a mural as they proposed meets the definition as outlined in our code as a sign right it fits yeah it and, and there's just sign. and there's no be, so because it fits the definition of sign yes. it's got to meet the code and there's not a good way for what you are proposing to fit this code so we need to change the code Correct. Right, well, like Einstein said. No, yeah, well, yes, not only what we're proposing, but what other future, future yeah. murals which right. will be coming, because right. I know that there are right. plenty of groups yep. that are looking at exploring that. So, so it's, this a, it's is an identified a, shortcoming or, or yes, blindness in the code that we'd, we'd yes. like to, yes. that we'd like yes. to rectify. And, and okay. the identified shortcoming was done by the HLPC. When I went in for the Certificate of Appropriateness, they were able to pinpoint just to make sure that we were meeting the current sign ordinance, but there was that nuance of we're at 600 square feet and it, technically we can only be at 500. So that's why I figured since I'm here, if you guys want to be cool and grant a variance, that, that'd be swell. But if not, at least, you know, work towards establishing something so getting a mural put up in this community is not as difficult as it currently is. You mentioned um, Beaver Dam and Watertown. How, how are their ordinances written? So I guess that's, if I can see that, what is it going to look like? I, I know you guys go through a lot of hoops to get things done in the city, and it frustrates me greatly when I watch meetings about it. So I don't want to make it too difficult. But, you know, if we can get the language from those communities and get it approved, or, or what exactly, so, what are you looking for tonight? So, Nate, I could literally throw a stone and every community around us has a mural. Yeah, I, I mean, I, th that's that's I've fact. seen them. Yeah, that's fact based. Yeah. As far as me digging out what all of these other ordinances are, I am a volunteer just as you. We do yeah. not have a consistent alder that attends our meetings, and we do not have a staff member. So, how much would you want to do on the side for this? If you were in my position, I guess that I would just want to make it easier for you guys. You know, like absolutely. And if we have to continue to go through the, the nuances that we've had to for this one, so be it. But HLPC was kind enough to address everything that could mm -hmm. potentially make it better and stronger and less of a headache. So people don't typically burn out halfway through the process. I'll, I'll interject a little bit. Um, if you need some help, um, I'm. <sighs> Because of all the experience, I've been on the board for about seven or eight years now, um, it wouldn't be too difficult for um, myself or someone from HLPC to do a little digging in regards to finding uh, an ordinance or a policy of murals and we could give it to the beautification or whatever process you'd want. Um, 
and I also know Wapan is in there too. Wapan's mm -hmm. a little bit more the same size as Columbus, and um, we could possibly help with that. Yeah, I think uh, the agenda item is discuss process to amend the zoning code for murals, and that's exactly what we're trying to define here. Yeah. How can we do this and do it more efficiently? Um, and it sounds like we, we do have some time, but... And I can certainly work with you. This isn't the first sign yeah. code I've, <laughs> I've had to amend, so hopefully, I mean, just give me a call. Maybe between the two of us, we can try to put something together and work with Paul Johnson. Okay. Okay, so I had a couple of points I wanted Wait, to... my light's been on for like forever. <laughs> we got to go in order of lights. Um, and then Shelly's next. So... Okay. <laughs> I was watching lights. Um, so I just want to make a quick comment. I'll be done real quick. If the recommendation is for 500 square feet and the first mural we want is already over 500 square feet, why is our recommendation 500 square feet? I feel like we're going to have a problem with this at our next mural and I just want to make sure that we don't. Um, we approved that only because that's the existing code and we didn't want to violate any code. And we do feel this is small. We would um, propose, you know, to allow it to be bigger. Um, but um, we discussed it at length and um, it's not our job to permit a variance, um, and so the committee or the commission, um, you know, gave it the blessings um, as we could, but we could not um, change the ordinance. So, what are we discussing here then? Changing the ordinance or giving a variance? Yeah, we're discussing what is the process so the to change. The just what are what do we need to do to change the code which ultimately I think would be recommendation to staff that you go out and you develop this code to meet the mural right right and then they come back and then we can discuss then then it becomes I mean with their input obviously with the size and everything but I don't think we're we're really doing anything other than what do, what are the next steps Okay. We don't have a process and procedure already defined for the steps to amend a code? I don't know that. If we don't, we should probably document it so I, we don't have to come back for that. I think there is. There um, absolutely is. You, yeah, you, you, there you, is. You write there, a code, you put it through public hearing process, and you vote on it. Okay. I mean, so that's not the hard part. we don't really not, need to discuss the, the process. No. We just need to discuss whether or not we want what that the process con to What the happen. content is of that process. Not the okay. specific content, but the concept of which direction are we going to go here okay so uh, yeah okay okay so my question is so I mean this this letter is pretty dense so I just I'm a kind of a bullet type person girl so are you guys looking for a 600 square feet for the size or yeah square feet and then what was the maximum height that you guys were thinking and what you've seen in the past or in other ordinances Um, we didn't have in front of us other ordinances okay. at the time, and um, as far as the height, um, this particular one for the red buds on um, is it the senior build the senior yeah, citizens the senior building yeah. now, and um, we'd like it to fit appropriately and honor the artists. And I think we do have time, like Lisa mentioned, about um, getting the process. I'm, you know, sometimes if we're doing everything right, the shortest road there is seems to be the easiest route, but we want it to be the correct route. Um, I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> an attorney, to know the exact process. I don't know if you want to either amend this one or um, to, you know, if we get one on the wall, maybe there'd be more open to people to give money and things like, like get, you know, the project going. But um, we certainly want to be respectful of the appropriate steps um, just so we're doing it in the right order. Okay. All right. Thanks. Can I help? You, okay. You can go. Um, Molly and Mike actually brought up couple of my concerns already so thanks for clarifying those one thing I just want to address that I don't what I don't think we can do is issue any variances tonight 
Um, we are not, this is not on, a, that was not on the agenda, so it's not something that we can act on. So I think since we have this time, um, if you build the ordinance the way it needs to be built, you don't need a variance. So I think we need to go through the process. I think the process should be, like Mike indicated, we determine you know what that process is. I mean, the city said let's work with Paul Johnson and set a you know have him. I mean, that's his job to to make ordinances and and review them and send them to us. So let's take advantage of the people we have here that are experts at this and um, let them do their thing and have it come back. That's all. Good point. Tell me more about how your proposal doesn't fit into the current sign ordinance. What are the things in the sign ordinance that are your hurdles currently? You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> then you're going to die in front of me. <laughs> I know. You'd be okay with that, right? <laughs> uh, <I'll... laughs> what, what I'm trying to get at is, like, what are the particular things in this proposal, and then expand that beyond, like what might be the same particular things or other particular things for other proposals that you might have in the so, future. So we can identify what's so wrong with this, this code yes. so, we can, so we can succinctly fix it. Yes. Okay, so the, the issue, the, the big issue is the size. Like that, when you, when you look at the sign ordinance, the size does not um, take into effect that there might be murals in the in the future. So if that was the one issue that would that came out of the HLPC meeting that I attended, size. Size matters. So we're gonna go with that. Um, now in regards to further down the road, what in an ideal, you know, cookie cutter world, what it would be great to see is a separate ordinance for people who have interest in murals because like I had stated before, there are more coming. There are groups that are interested in proceeding, not just with beautification, but people who are going, yes, I wanna get on this bandwagon and they want us to kind of help guide the way. And I can tell you that this has been a very rocky road. Um, so if you could make it a little less rocky with a clearly labeled out ordinance, that would be super. So size is the current problem. Size is, size is it. Is, like, does the sign ordinance prohibit signs on buildings downtown? Well, that would be the sign ordinance doesn't prohibit that, but your commission has a say in what goes on buildings downtown. Um, I believe the existing ordinance, I thought maybe I had a copy of it. Um, the, the one is the size and then the content. Um, meaning right now your sign ordinance, I believe, um, refers to promoting business. So it would be up to the interpretation of the mural. Um, it, you know, we're not the beautification commission. <laughs> you know, I don't think we're going to be promoting a certain business at this time, but say a business owner that would own uh, the property itself and would like to put up a mural specifically uh, for their business, then that's another probably something that like Paul, the city attorney should address because I, I think it's, it, it's a little bit complicated because of the content of the sign and then with the freedom of speech. So um, there's a lot entailed to the content that should be revealed or, you know, spe specified in a new ordinance or an amendment to the sign ordinance, whatever they want to do. So content is like an approved process? The content proposal? right now in the existing city ordinance um, really deals with the promotion of business. So it'd be the interpretation of are you promoting business in Columbus itself or are, you know, so it does not address, you know, if you want to, you know, I think of murals as artwork and honoring um, whatever we choose to, whether it's today's content or 200 years ago. And I don't think the existing signed ordinance has that language. 
And of course, the size is the biggest issue, probably. And then, of course, there's other issues such as um, do you put it on a board or do you paint it on the wall? Um, there's certain historic criteria that you need to meet and make sure because if there's a building that's never been painted, um, my belief is you certainly wouldn't want to paint directly onto that brickwork because you could damage that brickwork. Um, and so there's lots of different applications and that gets into the, like the building code. Going back to the size, mm -hmm. um, seems like that's a big issue, but is the size kind of tied to your canvas? This, our interpretation is the size would either be um, related to the size of the building and then as far as the canvas size, like in what Paula stated, the one they have proposed right now to fit on the senior citizen building appropriately is 100 square feet larger. And if you put something that is too small on that building, you know, it's not going to look right either. So I, I, that's um, a little bit of a loaded question. I think it depends on the size appropriate A for the building and then B the content of what's on the mural itself because a small sign might be just appropriate or a small mural might be appropriate for for a certain um, build for certain buildings or f for certain what you're trying to promote but a larger sign might be better da 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 or a larger mural I should say is that almost like tied to like green space I mean there's so much coverage you could have on a wall yeah, or it's or it's artistic proportion is the yeah. is what the issue is yeah Purpor I, I believe that's a correct word proportion for the building itself and the material in the mural you never see pictures of Mao that only take up this much of the building correct so I have a comment um, I so listening to what Paul is saying and listening to, to Ruth I think in my personal opinion I think a, an ordinance for murals specifically would make the most sense and the reason why is you can either make it to fit to fit the building proportionately and you know a side ordinance may or may not be appropriate for a mural I mean the like Ruth said a dozen times it's to promote business I would for me personally, I would like to see the ordinance be on Mir be for Miro specifically. To piggyback off of what Nate said um, and Shelley, it should be for Miro specifically, <laughs> and we should not have to reinvent the wheel. We should be finding ordinances from surrounding cities that have murals already and start there and review that and kind of go from there. So, I mean, we can sit here and we can and hash all the details, but really let's let the people that have done it successfully already and grab their ordinances and review it and see how we want to tweak it for our situation. Otherwise, we'll be here till midnight. <laughs> no, <laughs> Trying to I'd... figure out the ordinance you know, when our agenda item is discuss the process to amend the zoning code and to speak to what um, Andy was saying is we have to stick to the agenda item and we can't have walk on agenda items. So I'm just worried that we're, we're getting outside of the agenda item. I, I, I would challenge that. I, I think what we're doing here is just making sure that whoever is requesting this ordinance that we're, we're meeting whatever their needs are. Obviously, they've identified something in our code that probably is not good. But yes, I do agree with you. We're not going to rewrite the code specifically for Columbus, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. We are going to put that on staff to say, here's what your... Right, but in ordinance ad hoc, for example, we actually work with, we would work with CHLPC and the beautification committee for that wording. We wouldn't decide it like council wouldn't decide it. The proposal would be brought. So I think that's all that I'm getting at is, is this the avenue or is it outside? And then that proposal is brought to us and then we review it. That's what I'm trying to get at. I don't know. I mean, if we're, I, I don't know what the process is because this is my first time on this committee, but if we're supposed to hash it out now, that's fine. But I would think that we would go do the research and then bring back a recommendation. No, I think we're just gain, gaining information yeah. to understand exactly what 
but I, what you've laid out is probably exactly what the steps will be. So I was just going to comment that I agree with Shelley and everyone else that's mentioned it should be its own mural ordinance because I think you need to definitely delineate the two different things because you have signage for a business and you have a beautiful art project. I think those need to be separate. Good. And I guess with that, I mean, is there any more discussion? I was I was going to say that I think it probably could be fostered by a good definition of a mural yes. within the sign ordinance, right? Because right now, if if this meets the definition of a sign, we need a better definition for what you have, and then you can have a carve out within the sign ordinance that addresses murals specifically. Probably doesn't need to be a whole thing. I do like the idea of researching other communities for what they do for murals. But it will really only be applicable if they have had the same struggle of changing. Like, I'm thinking of Watertown. There's murals all over the place there. They might have some whole other process, or they might just be like, hey, murals are cool. cool. Go do it, right? And there's not even a, an ordinance in place. So some research is probably involved, but who knows if we'll stumble across anything that really meshes with what we got here. I'm not sure if we created our sign ordinance off of some other communities that might be a germane question also I don't think we did I don't know I think it was a a constructed creature <laughs> is your name on that so I guess um, from that what are, what are what are you requesting from us do we I think, I think what emotion? we will do is try to follow the the guidance, I guess, provided that one, we start to research what other communities have to see if it can be fit into the sign ordinance, which I have seen it completed rather nicely that way. Um, we will do that, and then I will reach out and make sure that I'm speaking to both these young women over here to make sure that we're meeting the goals of where this is actually going, not so I bring back an ordinance that doesn't fit, <laughs> if that makes sense because then it's going to defeat the entire purpose of all the work. So we will try to make sure that I'm speaking to the both of you as well. Thank you. For what it's worth, um, Henry did include this, uh, the existing sign ordinance in here. I believe that might be in your packet. Yep. Um, so there's a, I won't repeat myself or take any more time, um, but it, some of the definition is in there for quick reference. Thank you. Thank you all very much. So we provided you some guidance. I'm good. You're good? Everybody good? Mm -hmm. All right. I guess I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't like that they have.